Oh yeah. Welcome everyone to another edition of Get Your Game On, the channel dedicated to immersive gaming experiences. So I did it. I bought the 4090 and I'm going to share with you my experience and hopefully let you know if this might be a good upgrade for you. So um, as many of you know, I recently purchased the Pimax Crystal. It's uh, ordered. Hopefully it'll be here, you know, hopefully in the next month or so. And we're planning on a full review of it once we get it. But in order to do that, I thought I might need a little graphics power. So uh, much like I ordered the Crystal not to replace the Arrow, but to replace my old Vive Pro for room scale, I actually didn't buy the 4090 to replace my current graphics card in my rig, which is a 3080 Ti. Instead, I needed more power for my room scale rig, for room scale VR, and it currently only has a 3060 Ti, so I knew that wouldn't be enough for the Crystal. So the 3080 Ti is going to go into the room scale rig, and the new 4090 is already installed in my main rig that I use for simulations. Now, what I purchased, I was very excited because I, I knew exactly which 4090 card I wanted, and I finally found it. I was looking for the Gigabyte Water Force, and it has basically an all-in-one um, radiator. It's an all-in-one cooling solution. And the reason I wanted that is the 4090s are getting really big, really heavy, and I didn't like the idea of having all that weight just on that little PCI Express socket. I know it's reinforced and all that good stuff and that there's uh, brackets and all that, but I just really liked the idea of getting the majority of that weight up, mount it to the case with the radiator, and the card went in, and it's just like the old cards, you know, 10 years ago. It actually is a nice small little form factor, slid right in the slot, and I really like that. So that was the big reason I was holding out on the 4090. I wanted to get this specific uh, Gigabyte graphics card, and Micro Center finally had them in stock, and I was able to pick it up. So, so what do I think of this card? Well, let me just tell you straight out, this thing is a monster. Performance-wise, it is unbelievable. Um, the first thing I did was run some synthetic benchmarks, and what I did was run them prior to installing it on my 3080 Ti, and then I went ahead and installed the card and ran it again on the uh, 4090. So here are the results. On the 3080 Ti, we were getting an overall result of just over 19,000, but you can see on the uh, 4090, the overall result was uh, over 28,500. Now, that's not the most impressive thing, though. If you look closer at these numbers, take a look at just the graphics score, and this is in the exact same system. It's 20,000, 20, actually 0.5 thousand on its graphics score was the 3080 Ti, and if you look at what the 4090 can do, the 4090 jumped up over 35,000. That's a huge increase. I mean... It, it just blew me away. So I wanted to also share with you guys what I found in performance. And obviously, as you know, my most favorite uh, simulator is DCS. So what I did was, much like my uh, review when I did the Vive Pro 2 versus the HP and the performance there, I loaded up the carrier. Now, this is many years later, so there's been driver updates and things like that. So you can't really compare it to the old one. But in this new setup, we have the 3080 Ti versus the 4090. And I, I will show you here the difference in the uh, frame rates. So here we are on the carrier deck, a familiar sight. Again, this is a mission that's standard with DCS. I believe it's called Six Pack Cold Start and it's with the Super Carrier Module. And I really like this because it's uh, easier to kind of replicate my head movements. I have to do each of these independently, and uh, they're not exact, but they're close enough to give you a difference in performance. And you can see, looking down the deck, it's very taxing on both the GPU and the CPU. And uh, as we move our view to the bow, you can see it uh, eases up quite a bit. And you'll notice on the 4090, it actually goes into the green. So uh, the less uh, objects on the screen, it really helps out on the uh, 4090, whereas the 3080 Ti you can see is still being a little uh, taxed. And if you look at the frame rates, you know, we're at uh, 80s, 85, 86, all that good stuff versus the 3080 is down in the mid 60s. And uh, you'll see here after we watch the other F-18 launch off of the uh, front of the deck, as we shift our view back towards the uh, carrier, you'll see those frame rates drop on both cards. And, uh, but it's an interesting to note also, if you look at the GPU temperature, 
So the 4090 obviously isn't being taxed nearly as hard. It's only 45 degrees Celsius, whereas the uh, 3080 Ti is upwards of 73. So that shows you a little bit of difference in the power of these two graphics cards. So overall, you can see as we launch the final Hornet off the deck, the average, you know, not a lot, but you can see when you're not taxing it, you gain a ton of FPS with the 4090. Now I have to admit, I was a little surprised after seeing those 3D Mark scores that we really only gained about five or six frames per uh, second on average going from the 3080 Ti to the 4090. But I have to remind you, that is a very, very intense uh, simulation. There are so many objects, so that really drives it. And also, if you go back and watch, you'll notice the real constraint seems to be the CPU. Now, that was running in the single-threaded version of DCS. Uh, I'm still working on th multi-threading. So I think once multi-threading is enabled, I think you're going to see those frame rates bump up some more. Um, but that was a good comparison of graphics card to graphics card. So that's what we got. Now, after thinking well, only five frames, but I wanted to see how it felt in practice. So I jumped in the jet and decided to put it through its paces. Now, there's no comparison here because I hadn't flown this in the 3080, but I just wanted to see how the 4090 felt. And let me tell you, it felt amazing. It was so much smoother than even the 3080 Ti. Watching enemy aircraft fly by, it just looked so real. So in practice, this thing actually did really well. So as you can see, Flying around in DCS with the 4090 was amazing. Overlord 1-1, one, one. Colt 1-1, one, one. request bogey dope. The mission that I'm running here, you'll see the FPS, it's hovering right around, you know, 80s and even hits 90 frames per second several times. And I remember from flying this before with the 38CI, uh, I was in the high 50s. So when you're not stressing this thing to its max, you get a huge peak in performance uh, from that. Everything was butter smooth. Any of those little hiccups that I used to have uh, seemed to be mostly gone, and I didn't have any of the stutter when I'd come into the carrier landing. So you can see here we've improved the average frame count when you're just flying an average mission pretty well. Now I'll continue to test this obviously, I'm still working on getting the multi-threading up and going, um, still working on some of that with the motion compensation, and obviously we want to test it in multiplayer, but just initially you can see this was a great upgrade for the 4090 uh, for DCS. So would I recommend upgrading to the 4090? Well, that's a tough call. This is similar to, do you upgrade to the Pimax Crystal from the Arrow? Um, 
for me, again, I didn't upgrade necessarily to get my 3080 and upgrade it to a 4090. I'm really trying to upgrade my room scale rig from the 3060 Ti. So in that situation, absolutely, because I don't think that 3060 is going to run the crystal uh, very well. So, so for my situation, I'm happy I did it. If you're sitting there with a 3080 Ti or better, I'd be, it'd be a hard call. If you absolutely don't have an issue with the money and, and you, you can do it, I would say, yeah, you're definitely going to see a performance increase. But if money's a little tight, you're not sure, I probably wouldn't recommend upgrading unless you had a 3080 or lower. If you have a 3080 non-TI or lower, you're probably going to see the increase. You're going to see it. Certainly, if you have something like a 1080, yeah, you, you, this thing's a monster for that. But, you know, the lower you go down the scale, the more it makes sense. But it is an amazing card. Very happy with it. So now it's time to let you guys in on a little secret that may or may not impact your decision to upgrade. So I did something they didn't recommend you do. On the box, it recommends that you have a 1,000 watt power supply. Well, I've got a high-end Seasonic 850 watt power supply in my rig now. So I thought, well, let's at least give that a shot before we go out and spend a few more hundred dollars on a new power supply to see if this works. I figure... Worst case, it won't start up or something like that, so let's try that. So guess what? It worked. And I am actually using my 850-watt Seasonic power supply to drive my 4090. Now, I think one of the reasons I'm able to get away with that is I actually have an AMD CPU. I have a 5900X. So uh, those are far more power efficient than their equivalent Intel chips at the time. So I think that's one of the reasons, uh, one of the reasons I'm able to get away with that. So I also uh, only used three cords coming from the power supply. Now the little adapter that you get with the card actually has four plugins uh, to, from the from the uh, power supply, but I only had three. So I actually used one of the little pigtails, which they don't recommend, uh, for one of them. So I've got actually three cords coming out of the power supply that are plugging into the adapter cable, and then I've got one of those pigtailed. Now I don't know that I try getting away with two pigtails. But one seems to work just fine. So, and again, this, this is highly dependent on having a quality power supply, especially when, when it comes to the 12 volt rails, because that's what feeds the video card. So if you have a good power supply that didn't skimp on that, uh, I think you can get away with it. And so far, so good on my end. Now, one point, if you uh, are going to think about a 4090, they still are a little sensitive on that, um, uh, that little adapter, the, the new uh, high power adapter that they're using. And I would highly recommend that you take that adapter cable if you don't have one of the new uh, ATX3 power supplies. Make sure you plug that into the card before you mount the card on the motherboard. That will let you get that thing. It's got to be pushed in really tight. And if you can get away with it, don't undo it and redo it. it the more you undo it and redo it, the more it can get uh, debris in there and it can cause problems. So what I did is I had the card, I had the little adapter cable, I plugged that thing in as hard as I felt like I could without it breaking, and then once that was set in, I put it in the motherboard, and then I plugged in the, uh, the actual power supply cables into the adapter from there. So that's just a hint, a little tip that will hopefully uh, help you and, and alleviate any potential problems with your 4090. So that's kind of it. I just wanted to share with you where we're at in preparation for this new Pimax Crystal. Uh, I can't wait for it to get in. I'm getting more and more excited about it. The more uh, the more I see other reviewers and other people talking about the local divvy and all that, and people are talking about how great it is in Elite Dangerous. So obviously once I get it in, you guys will know. We're going to do a review. We're going to compare it to the Arrow. We're going to see if it was a good purchase or not, just like the 4090. But for me right now, this 4090, it was a good purchase, and I'm glad I did it. So... Until next time, remember, if you like content like this, like and subscribe. And until then, remember to get your game on.